G'day everyone, we're Krista and Tony, a couple of Australians have taken a year off to travel the world. In this episode, we explore the beautiful city of New York, where over five action-packed days, we explore the best highlights the city has to offer. From hidden rooftop views to an ancient Egyptian obelisk, to an incredible library that's something you'd see out of Harry Potter, we pack as much as we can in four and a half days. So we started out at LaGuardia Airport, where we quickly jumped in a cab and headed towards Manhattan Island crossing one of the longest suspension bridges in the US, followed by a scenic drive along East River towards our hotel in Broadway. And this is our room at the, where are we? Broadway Plaza Hotel. Broadway Plaza Hotel. Just be prepared, if you want nice accommodation on a high floor in New York City, you're gonna have to pay for it. So we dumped our bags and took a 15 minute stroll towards the Highline Walkway, which is a beautiful park that's been converted from an elevated freight rail line. This rail line was originally built back in the 1930s, then abandoned in the 1980s. However, local residents saved it from being torn down, where it was then converted into a beautiful elevated park that you see today. It's a must see if you're visiting New York, with incredible views, beautiful gardens, and you can even see old remnant railway line, which I tripped over at least once. So after walking a couple of miles above the city, you come across a massive honeycomb landmark that's been temporarily named The Vessel. The competition is being held to rename it, with entries such as The Hive, King Kong's Jungle Gym, the Giant Trash Can, and my personal favourite, Stary McStairface, because apparently it's got a lot of stairs. So next up, we decided to grab a quick snack at a local New York deli before walking towards the Empire State Building. This building was built back in the 1930s and was the tallest building in the world until 1971. So after a quick visit to the museum section, paying our respects to King Kong, we headed up to the observation deck. The elevator ride up was pretty cool. The elevator roof was animated, showing its construction on the way up to the top. Once we reached the roof, the view was actually pretty epic. You can see across the whole city from every direction. We actually got the City Pass, which gives you discounted access to five popular attractions in the city, including the Empire State Building, so it's definitely worth checking out. You wouldn't believe it, but the Art Deco design of the Empire State Building is actually based on a pencil. And the top of the building was once used as an anchor point for mooring airships. And did you know in 1945, a World War II bomber once crashed into the top of the building flying in thick fog? So as late Arvo approached, we ventured to a rooftop bar next door for a breathtaking cityscape and well-deserved drinks. It turned out that tipping in New York is pretty customary, which led to me double tipping, which was a classic rookie tourist move. Seriously, tipping so expensive. So after tipping way too much, we then headed down to the street in search of some famous New York style pizza. So here pizza. we go, we got some pizza here. How much did it cost us? We got two slices of New York pizza, two garlic bread, and it cost six dollars. Six dollars. We're gonna be eating this every day. Well, it's famous for a reason. New York City's pizza truly lived up to the hype. Scaffolding. Scaffolding. Way, that's where we were today, at the top of that thing. And we had more scaffolding, scaffolding, and the Mickey store was scaffolding. The whole city is covered in scaffolding. So after eating way too much pizza and checking out the scaffolding, we popped down to visit old mate Carrie Bradshaw at her apartment as Krista was an avid Sex in the City fan. Turns out she wasn't home, but someone was, and they weren't too happy about fans posing on the steps. Hence, the rope and signs. Even Sarah Jessica Parker herself caused a commotion in October 2014 when she filmed a commercial, reaching over the chain to place her shoes from a new collection onto the stairs, causing a major uproar with the owners. So after a massive day, we headed back to our hotel and snuck onto the roof to check out the city views. Then we headed down to our room and passed out. And this is a second hotel called The Element in Times Square, which is like five minutes from Times Square. And I believe it's by Weston. So this comes with a fridge, stovetop kitchen, that's our luggage, that's the bed, and a view of some trees, uh, rubbish, random stuff. But if you look up, you can see some buildings. And it's all for 170 US a night. 
So we went downstairs for the free breakfast along with the entire hotel. Then we decided to get a more traditional New York City breakfast with an egg and bacon bagel, which was absolutely amazing. You guys have to try the street food when you go. So walking off to breakfast, we found ourselves in the tranquil oasis of Bryant Park 15 minutes later. This park is located just behind the library and was once actually a reservoir in the late 1930s until it was transformed into this epic garden. So next was the public library itself. With its grand entrance, stunning architecture, it's a place that is definitely worth a visit. The high ceilings, beautiful staircase and white marble stone is truly amazing. The most beautiful room within the library is the Rose Reading Room, where access is restricted to research or quiet study only, so make sure you bring some textbooks to get in. Otherwise, you can sign up for the free library tour. One of the recent contributing factors to the entry restriction was a large group of Japanese anime fans making a pilgrimage to this room, where a beloved anime character, Ash Lynx from the anime Banana Fish, passed away in a chair right in the middle of the Rose Reading Room. These Magna fans have been visiting the room to pay homage, often seen leaving roses and occasionally expressing their grief in loud sobs. So a short walk along 42nd Street and we were at the Grand Central Terminal in New York City, which serves nearly 1 million passengers per day. Interesting fact is that there's a secret platform known as Track 61, which was built for President Roosevelt during World War II. The platform allowed the President to discreetly access the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, which had a private elevator directly connected to Track 61 via an armoured carriage. Nearby is the iconic Rockefeller Center, known for its popular ice skating ring during the winter months and its famous Christmas tree lighting ceremony, which has been an annual tradition since 1933. You might recognise it out of everyone's favourite film, Elf. And Krista also managed to find a random rocking horse. <laughs> Across the road is St Paul's Cathedral, which was built over 150 years ago, with its beautiful stonework and Gothic architecture, followed by some more New York-style pizza. Then just two minutes across the road was the Museum of Modern Art. MoMA is world renowned for its iconic art by artists such as Van Gogh and Picasso, where we saw some melting clocks, statues with big butts on their heads, a couple of Picasso paintings, Starlights by Van Gogh, the Windows classic blue screen of death, then a blank canvas. Pure genius. We did find some pretty cool metallic squares though. So just come to this little window here. I think it's probably the best part of the exhibit. It's my favourite anyway. Look at the views. Can you stop? So um, I just don't think I'm smart enough for contemporary art. Uh, we really like the square and the circles. And yeah. uh, I like all the blank campuses. Very similar to my... What my. goes on? Yeah. What goes on inside my head? <laughs> oh, we're so uncultured. So after we had our fill of culture, we headed to Times Square in the late hour though. Then quickly popped back to the hotel to see an epic sunset. Then back to Times Square again for night time. So we could then check out all the bright lights. Times Square is one of the most visited places around the world with approximately 3,400 pedestrian visitors each day, amounting to over 124 million a year. And we were two of them. Wow. Yes, they're putting more scaffolding up. Woohoo! Just what we need, more scaffolding, yes. Well, you can't visit New York City without checking out Central Park. This beautiful escape in the middle of the city spans vertically over 50 blocks, with the park taking up more space than over 600 football fields. It has over 9,000 benches, a skating ring, and eight different lakes, which are home to more than five species of turtles, with several being introduced house pets that were set free by unloving owners. And to top it all off, it also has a 3,500 year old obelisk, which was gifted from Egypt over 150 years ago. Known as Cleopatra's Needles, the second obelisk was gifted to Britain, while this one was transported by a wooden boat over 140 years ago to Central Park. Next on the list is a boat cruise along the Hudson to see the entire city from the water. 
This cruise passes along some of New York City's best viewpoints, passing under most of its iconic bridges, followed by a sail past the Statue of Liberty for sunset. When the Statue of Liberty was first gifted to America back in 1885, it was a golden brown colour, but as it's coated in copper, over time she oxidised and, uh, well, turned green. So for our last full day, we caught the subway, which is not nearly as terrifying as the Matrix movie made it out to be. All the way to the Oculus, New York City Transportation Hub. This building was designed to look like a bird about to take flight with a cost of over $4 billion, making it the most expensive train station in the world, just outside the Twin Towers Memorial, which commemorates the September 11 attacks of 2001. Two pools with the largest man-made waterfalls in the United States reside where the Twin Towers once stood, symbolizing the loss of life and the physical void left by the attacks. The new One World Trade Center, also known as the Freedom Tower, stands adjacent to the memorial as a symbol of resilience and the city's ability to rise again. So after reflecting at the Twin Towers Memorial, we headed towards the National Museum of the American Indian. This beautiful building has a stunning entrance with free entry and is full of incredible displays showcasing the rich native American Indian culture and heritage. Just out the front is Wall Street, where we checked out the bull with thousands of other influencers trying to get their hands on its brass. Why would you want a photo of your kids under the... The balls of the ball. So we gave them a miss and checked out the stock exchange. Even getting a glimpse of the Einstein of Wall Street, he's been the face of Wall Street's best and worst moments for almost four decades, being the most photographed broker on the trading floor. So after seeing the world's largest casino, we headed down to the Brooklyn Bridge, crossing its pedestrian pathway with hundreds of others. The Brooklyn Bridge is the first steel wire suspension bridge ever constructed and also the longest suspension bridge in the world when completed in 1883. We are now walking the Brooklyn Bridge. It's about 4,000 degrees. Yep. It's about 4,000 people. I need to go to the bathroom. I for the last two hours, so... Whew, it's gonna be a fun walk. It's so tall, it's home to several peregrine falcons, which are the fastest animals on record, capable of reaching speeds of over 200 miles per hour. Once we cross the river, we headed to the Brooklyn Bridge Park, which has stunning panoramic views of the Manhattan skyline and the East River. So getting the train back to our hotel was super easy thanks to the subway where we packed our bags ready for our last day. Just before heading to the airport we made a quick dash for the Morgan Library which was once the private office of J.P. Morgan, one of the most powerful and influential figures of the financial world in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He was fascinated by literature, creating this beautiful library full of unique texts including papyrus scrolls dating back to ancient Egypt. So once we took about 2,000 photos of the library, we ran back to our hotel, grabbed our bags and headed to the airport. We hope you enjoyed this whirlwind five days in New York City. We'd love to know if you thought we saw everything and let us know what you think we missed. Thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one where we fly to the west coast and hire another van to see Yosemite. Don't forget to subscribe and like.